Jimmy Bogo, KTN News. Now, apart from rising cost of animal feeds, the challenge posed by diseases is a bigger threat to livestock farming. An example of such disease is East Coast Fever, a tick-borne disease of cattle that has left a trail of destruction and losses in farms amounting over 100 billion shillings. Now, our reporter, Dr. Paul Kanyeve, visited the Veterinary Research Institute and brings us this report on today's episode of Resident Vet. And with that, we've come to the end of business today. I'll leave you with this report by Dr. Paul Kanyede. My name is Kelvin Yakundi. Enjoy the rest of your week. Animals in Kenya, especially livestock, that is cattle, are faced by many challenges such as disease threats like East Coast fever. In today's episode of The Resident Vet, we are going to bring you some of the solutions from the Veterinary Research Institute here in Mogoga about some of the technologies that farmers can adopt to fight this Kira disease. Kaidri, join us. I am Dr. Monica Maichomo, uh, a senior research scientist and uh, the institute director in Carlo, the Veterinary Research Institute. My name is Dr. Moses Olu. I work for CALRO, Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization. My name is Dr. Mary Mathenge. I'm a private practitioner in Nyadarwa County. Uh, the Veterinary Research Institute is one of the 17 institutes in CALRO and uh, with a mandate of uh, research into issues of animal health and animal welfare. So we do our research work to address uh, diseases of economic importance, addressing or um, affecting the food producing animals so that we can be able to deliver or inform the uh, effective disease control technologies uh, together with the in, um, extension services. Some of the examples we have like uh, East Coast fever, we have uh, foot and mouth disease, we have uh, contagious bovine pyrrhonimonia or the lying keto disease. Uh, we have others, uh, tick-borne diseases, uh, helminthosis, and among other viral diseases. It is diseases mostly that affect trade that can make the animals not to access the market, that uh, also limit production. Uh, we can also say that they are zoonotic in the sense that they can um, uh, be able to affect uh, the livestock keepers as well. East Coast fever is a disease of cattle. It affects only cattle and uh, most of the time if your cattle have not been exposed to this pathogen before then most of the time they die from this disease. And local uh, animals do not show many uh, serious clinical signs of ECF. But the exotic breeds, the, uh, the dairy breeds that we keep, show serious severe clinical signs. So where this disease is brought by, about by ticks, it's called the brown ear tick. And because it's called the brown ear tick, it sticks uh, on the ears and around the perineum of the cow, the tail of the cow. So when it sticks there, then it transmits the the disease to the animals and they get sick and come down with ECF. And when uh, your animals get ECF, for milking cows first you notice a severe drop in milk. The volume of milk that you get from the animal goes down, the animal will stop eating and thereafter you'll see tearing. The animal will start shedding tears as well as swelling of the lymph nodes around the neck you're able to notice and around the ears you'll notice swellings. These are lymph nodes that swell once the disease is in the animal. Then uh, as the disease progresses the animal will develop difficulty in breathing and finally die because fluids come from the body into the lungs and they uh, stop the animal from breathing normally then that is what causes the death of the animal the training is very important because this disease is unique we call it the uh, infection and treatment method in essence we are using a live organism 
it's a very crude method of vaccination so it requires a lot of care in terms of its delivery it has to deliver the right dosage at the right uh, parameters so that is why we want to train them so that uh, we do not have a lot of breakthroughs because of the life um, uh, pathogen and then uh, they have to monitor the vital parameters in case of a breakthrough because we can get like five to ten percent breakthrough infection then they can be able to treat and ensure that the farmer does not lose they are an invaluable animals this tick um, uh, this ecf vac uh, vaccination training it's a new technology and um, most of us by the time we were completing our schools our uh, training this um, training was not well endowed in us and so we feel that um, uh, that taking this uh, training is a golden opportunity because now we'll be able to help our farmers in order to ensure that using the infection prevention control measure through vaccinations we're going to bring the disease down the research on this vaccine was done in the 70s and the 80s the last century so over time because the disease is a serious challenge farmers were looking for a solution and uh, this disease this vaccine was has been adopted in the last 10 years by farmers so the disease uh, the vaccine is uh, a live pathogen the causative what causes East Coast fever is what we use for vaccinating these animals so this is prepared from in the lab and uh, the ticks are infected with this pathogen and the ticks are used to make the vaccine thereafter the ticks are used uh, crushed and this is what we use for vaccinating these animals there are two versions of the vaccine we have the mugoga cocktail which is a combination of three strains there is kiambu 5 there is a selengeti trans uh, uh, transformed and uh, uh, another one and then we have the malikebuni vaccine it's all strain which was obtained from the coastal part of Kenya and uh, both of both variants uh, the beauty is that they they attain 70 uh, percent both homologous and heterologous uh, coverage uh, across the different uh, uh, strains that are found in the country this is a live vaccine so live vaccine means that it can cause that disease if not used properly. So unlike other vaccines that are out there in the market, this uh, is a different vaccine and that's why uh, veterinarians have to go through this special training to ensure that instead uh, that animals get, uh, re get protected with this vaccine instead of getting them ill because of the live nature of this vaccine. So we have had problems and reports previously where people have used this vaccine, people who are not trained, and animals have come down with East Coast fever. So because we need to uh, stop that, therefore we are training them on how to effectively use this vaccine. We, we have uh, received uh, very good results uh, using the government farms. For example, Carlo has large farms where they faced uh, a lot of uh, cattle mortalities, especially in the buffalo corridors. And once we did the vaccination for them, that problem was resolved. We've worked with ranchers both in the coast and also in Lake Ipia and pastoral communities, including daily farms. And uh, the reports are very good, very encouraging. However, we have had a few breakthroughs, but it was uh, just part of the norm because we say we can get five to ten percent breakthroughs, but with good uh, monitoring and uh, timely treatment with the available drugs, they have not uh, lost uh, uh, animals uh, significantly. So whatever the response we've gotten is just within the norm and very encouraging. The only challenge we find with this vaccine is that being that it's a live vaccine, it can actually cause the disease. So for people who are not trained, when they use this vaccine and do not use it properly, you get some animals coming down with East Coast fever. And uh, if you use it properly, you get, you minimize the number of animals that come down with the disease. So this is the major constraint that we find. The other constraint that has been mentioned is the cost of the vaccine compared to other vaccines that cost far much less. You find that this vaccine is delivered to farmers at about 600 shillings for a young calf to about uh 1500 to very huge cattle so this cost is uh, different from what other vaccines cost so fi farmers find it a bit too uh, a bit 
not very affordable especially if you have many heads of cattle but comparing to the cost of treating an animal that comes down with ecf which is about four thousand to six thousand shillings this vaccine still gives you much more economic uh, value i call and my advisory to the farmers is that this disease is expensive and uh, causes a lot of challenge uh, but uh, they need to consult the health providers the qualified ones the trained ones because solutions are there uh, we recommend uh, had uh, pro uh, uh, protection or uh, at hard level so that they can do the vaccinations and uh, once we attain like 80 uh, percent coverage in their hearts their, their assumption is that we'll be able to attain the herd immunity so those options are available they should consult their service providers who are trusted and uh, they'll be able to get the solutions that's the first line of defense and if the animals uh, uh, fall sick in case of a breakthrough then drugs are available for treatment the animal health sector in kenya faces many challenges including pests and diseases and with the novel technologies such as vaccination that has been developed by kenya Ag and agricultural research institute it is possible to convert some of these losses into gains so that farmers can earn better from their agribusinesses. That is all we had for you in today's episode of The Resident Vet. Until next time, bye-bye.